Hey, uh, Deck, you ever heard of Goku? Congratulations on the baby, man. It's a beautiful thing. I have a baby blanket coming, but it's going to freak Jack, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Thank you, buddy. Jack, there's your buddy. Hey. <laughs> Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and our other buddy back there, good old Ring. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Oh my goodness. Um, I was sleep this morning, sleeping good in my own bed and everything else. And my buddy Clarence, missing in action, calls me and says, Mark, the Cowboys are signing Carl Lawson. I was like, blah, 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 what? what? What are you talking about? Uh, he's like, Cowboys are signing Carl Lawson. Now, here's what I'm going to say. You may remember that when Sam Williams went down in training camp, Okay, when Sam Williams went down, he ended up sending a message or tweeting out there um, that, uh, you know, a, a star, you know, it's a star. And he came in for a workout with some others, and he ended up not getting signed by the Cowboys at that time. Um, but apparently, the Cowboys, I, I don't know if this is an all-in move or not, but um, I kind of pointed to you guys, um, I'm trying to think if it was Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. You, you know, where in the end, William Shatner, this is going back, this is back, way back, I think it was. And, and they're going after the Klingons and stuff, and they're like, Captain, we're in range, Captain. You know, they're flying right at it, you know, and you got William Shatner up there, and he's just like, wait, 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 fire, okay? And maybe after last night, the Cowboys signing Phillips, and then this morning, them signing Lawson, is this the beginning of All In? That the Cowboys were lulling everybody to sleep and now all of a sudden they're signing people? Or, or is this 2020 all over again? 2020, we had the same deja vu feeling because we had signed veteran safety Clinton Ha Ha Dix. And it seems like the joke was on us. We ended up signing Gerald McCoy. Okay, Gerald McCoy, oh my God, Gerald McCoy, you know, Tampa Bay, he was all excited about playing on, you know, like Thanksgiving in front of his family and stuff and being a Dallas Cowboy, you know, and we signed Don Terry Poe, another really big, you know, one technique guy. I got all, I'll be honest, I got excited because I was like, they're finally showing some love to the big guys and realizing they needed to run stuff. The only problem was Don Terry Poe. Uh, literally was just too fat and just looking for a paycheck on his way out of the NFL and didn't bust a grape. And then we got Emerson Griffin, okay? Emerson Griffin, who um, came coming, of course, for some great years with the Minnesota Vikings. He, he had a few tackles, a couple of sacks and stuff, but wasn't the same Emerson Griffin that we had before, and he literally got traded back to Minnesota, I believe, or went back to Minnesota. So that was where we brought in a lot of veteran free agents and they didn't pay it out for us so let's tamp it down a little bit so a couple of things here um of course with sam williams going down here, here's where this will be good and i uh, forgive me for my exuberance i got trashed yesterday because i was excited that the cowboys actually ended up signing um phillips you know defensive tackle they immediately went to oh now now he don't have anything for mozzie smith no no jackasses no dummies if you understand what the cowboys actually have been doing is they've been working on changing mozzie smith's body He's, they've lightened his load. He's about 310, and they're trying to make him a three technique. They're teaching him to use his hands and to be off of the ball a little bit more. So you can have Mozzie playing a one technique or a three technique. Then you can also end up using Phillips as a one technique. So now you've got more beef on the line. The fat boys are back. That, that's, that, that's right. The fat boys are back. 
And you could end up having, of course, some sets where you've got three defensive linemen. And you've also got O.C. and Digazua out there. So now you've got a bigger front to help stop the run when you're going against run-heavy teams. Because Mike Zimmer has done a 3-4 and a 4-3 defense. And what you have to understand, too, is people evolve and change things that they do. And, you know, everybody will say, well, he doesn't have the right personnel for the defense he wants to run. How do we know he wants to run that same defense that he hasn't evolved? And so you look at that. The next thing we're looking at is Micah Parsons has been everywhere on the field, including running back. Um, having him being able to, you know, line up on the A-gap in, in a two-point stands and rush or coming off as a defensive end. They can do more of that if they have two good defensive ends. If you have a um, Carl Lawson, now, now here's the question of Carl Lawson, okay? Carl Lawson was injured most of last year, only played, I think, in five games. Um, he is about, if he's in shape and uninjured, he's like having uh, Dorrance Armstrong. That's That would be probably uh, what I would equate to him. A little stockier. He's 6'2", 260 or so in his career. Now, let's go. Let's get his statistics here. Um, we talked about him before, but 6'2", 265, um, 29 years of age, not extremely old or anything. Um, like you said, he was injured last year. He, he ended up only having a couple of tackles. Uh, the year before, though, was very productive. Uh, with the Jets. He ended up having seven sacks, 33 combined tackles, 18 uh, solo tackles. Um, the year before that, five and a half sacks, five sacks, one sack, and as a rookie in Cincinnati, he had eight and a half sacks. So this is a good veteran, veteran signing that will definitely help the rotation on the defense. We have Marshawn Needland, who is right now looking really good. And we got D-Law that's looking really good. Um, Goldston uh, is, is steady, and hopefully he'll come around a little bit more as well. But what they want to be able to have, and you can see that Mike Zimmer is definitely having input and a stamp on this defense and actually getting some players. Um, this will help this defense in the rotation, having both guys. Um, putting uh, I, I you know our biggest problem for the Cowboys has always been we're very top heavy with talent and because we're so top heavy heavy with talent that your guys that are down the next level usually drops off so much and the reality is is it's not about those eight or nine guys it's about those guys up to 30 that you need to play a role because when you lose one of those guys then all of a sudden, you're dropping off so much in talent. Um, this is, is nice to see, and maybe this will end up beginning to get a little bit of uh, love for the Cowboy fans because I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> looking at the Cowboys, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras here. Looking at the Cowboys yesterday, yesterday, um, if you watched my video about um, Huggins, this is some highlights here. Hopefully we don't get copyrighted from the NFL of uh, Carl Lawson over the last three years. Um, with Huggins yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, with Huggins yesterday getting into a fight in practice, um, I think that this kind of maybe a message is going to be sent to him about we're no nonsense and that maybe Phillips is the replacement for um, for him, um, but maybe this is also the message that the Cowboys realize with players beginning to drop in training camp, that they're really, really thin and that maybe they need to go ahead and start saying, we have a really good team. Let's supplement it and do some things to try and get over the hump. Um, ultimately, that's what's going to be the, the question is, can we get over the hump? And when you look at Areas that we've had problems with when it comes to playoff times. It's always stopping the run and running the football. Now, the Cowboys have done a lot quietly. You know, it's not the, the big signings of, you know, the Hassan Reddicks, although the Jets don't technically have him signed or anything like that. The Cowboys 
you know, they lost Dorrance Armstrong. They lost uh, Dante Fowler, you know, across the defense. They lost Hankins. Well, um, your signing of Phillips replaces Hankins. You lost Sam Williams and Dante Fowler. Uh, Carl Lawson, if he's healthy, can be the replacement for those guys. And you look at Amazi Smith, that's an improvement. You look at Overshone um, coming back, and right now the way he's playing, that's an improvement with Eric Kendricks for the linebacking core. So right now, your front seven with Micah Parsons and D-Law is improved over where it was last year. You can definitely say that. And knowing that running and stopping the run that Aaron Jones just ran rough shot through us um, – <clears throat> is in a better position to be able to stop that. And Mike Zimmer is truly beginning to put his stamp on these guys. So maybe this is the moment that things start changing. If the Cowboys were to get Dak Prescott's deal, as well as C.D. Lamb's deal done, they would create extra cap space if they did want to add more personnel. Now, these moves are veteran moves. They're not going to be ones that are going to cost a whole bunch of money. And the Cowboys basically swapped picks yesterday for Phillips. They ended up taking um, their sixth round, which hopefully will be a very late sixth round pick, to the Giants. And the Giants, I think, are going to be ass-ass that their seven round pick is going to be very, very high. You basically kind of look at that and say there might be 10 or 15, maybe 20 spaces away from that pick. And you've got a player that's going to be able to help you now. So these are... Um, shrewd moves, so to speak. And you can look and say the shrewd moves that the Cowboys have made in the past sometimes have worked out. Uh, they did with Robert Quinn when we made the trade for him uh, late in his career. You can look at that one and say that that one definitely was a helpful one. You could look and say Brandon Cooks as well as Stephon Gilmore. The trades of the fifth round picks were definitely helpful um, as well. Uh, we don't want to see Dan. We don't want to see Dan. So that's what we have right now. We'll have more on this a little bit later. I'm still waiting to see if the Cowboys do anything about Carl, I mean, excuse me, about uh, Huggins, because Huggins, he might be in some hot water right now. All right, good people. This is a way to wake up in the morning. Good Cowboy news. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. <laughs>